was involved last year, including all those other ones we're going to talk about throughout the game. But Shelby Coker, what she does is phenomenal. It's two-time All-MAC conference, and she got right started the other night on Monday, getting started to where she left off. So for her to be on that court, working with those people who got those experiences last year, I expect for NIU to put up a fight tonight. A really important piece to that Northern Illinois team, not just for tonight, but overall moving forward as we are just about ready to go here from Carver Hawkeye Arena to open up the 2024 Big Ten women's basketball season as it is underway here from Carver Hawkeye. Hawkeyes take the ball first. And an important piece in that lineup, but we're not seeing her in the starting lineup right now, AJ. We talk a lot pregame, played really well the other night. Kylie Fierbach gets the start for the Hawkeyes. Kylie Fierbach with the first bucket and the new look Iowa Hawkeyes team. And it's Kylie Fierbach who opens it up with a three. What a way to open up the new era under head coach Jan Jensen. A new era, an exciting era. Lisa Bluter at the helm for so long. Jan Jensen finally getting her turn. Has probably had a lot of opportunities to go elsewhere and lead a program. Her turn to lead the Hawkeyes. Ball goes out of bounds. They'll stay on this side of the court. A.J. Reister alongside Hayden Hawksmeyer tonight. For the season opener for the Iowa Hawkeyes, Northern Illinois opened up their season last weekend. As this one goes up and over Stonebreaker with the first bucket for the Huskies. And Stonebreaker's gonna be a big name, a big body in the post. Get it. The key matchup tonight is her versus Stolke, who can stay out of foul trouble and who can generate some fouls. That ball goes out of play and a whistle's blown. They'll stay on this side and Lucy Olsen will inbound it. Olsen finds Fearbach, left wing. Fearbach with a three already to open the night. Gives it up for Olsen. Back out to Stolke all the way around to Fearbach. Taylor McCabe, big returner this season as well for the Hawkeyes. Lucy Olsen, the Villanova transfer in the paint, puts up a shot, a whistle's blown. They'll be going the other way. Yeah, and Olsen just a walk right there, but there's a little taste of what she can do. She's a shot creator. You're not gonna see a ton of shots from the, beyond the arc. We talked to Jan Jansen. She wants to try and you know, make her uncomfortable, make her shoot some threes from the on the arc. Taylor McCabe is gonna be a key in that aspect for the Hawkeyes, but Lucy Olsen, a shot creator, can do it from all across the wing. And Taylor McCabe last season really started to show up at the end of this season. It really became a reason why she was so important coming back was because of how she closed out last season. Yeah, and how she closed out, but Taylor McCabe's always been a shooter ever since high school. Won a high school three-point shooting contest as a senior in high school, Nebraska Miss Basketball. She's been waiting for her opportunity, and we saw glimpses of that last year. Here's Anna Stolke gets her own rebound, picks it up. Here's McCabe. Olsen pops a three. No good off the back iron. Stolke fighting for the rebound. Keeps it in play. Fearbach finds McCabe. Pulls up, three-pointer off the mark. O'Grady keeps it in. Good ball movement here from the Hawkeyes as they continue to hold possession. A lot of hustle there from the four and the five. O'Grady and Stolke making them work down there. Olsen, tough two, rims out. Tipped into the air, brought down by O'Grady. McCabe, loco three, bingo! Taylor McCabe from way downtown. And right on cue, AJ, we were talking about her, about the fifth shot on that possession. What a play there for Iowa to keep it alive. That started with O'Grady and Stolke to make that happen for the Hawkeyes. There are about three or four balls that should have gone out of play, and somehow the Hawkeyes kept it alive. Tipped away from by Stolke. Lucy Olsen to O'Grady in the paint. Puts up a shot, gets it to go, but the foul happened before the shot. They call that a travel there. O'Grady got a little excited. We get a watch on here. Taylor McCabe from way downtown. Got to love the confidence from the junior because, you know, missed that shot very badly uh, earlier in the possession. Able to gain that confidence back, drain a very long three. Just in front of the Tiger Hawk as the Huskies go to work. Down six to four. This one's ripped away by Kylie Fierbach. She already has a three tonight. Gives it up to Stolke. Not about popping the three. Olsen drives into the paint, gives it up to Fierbach. She pulls up from three. Back iron, no good, picked up by the Huskies. Yeah, and Stolke, you saw her hesitate from beyond the arc. That's not her comfortable shot. We saw her take a couple in the exhibition match, but she likes to be inside in the post, if any way possible. Doyle's tough too, rims out, rebounded by the Huskies. Another shot goes up, but Stonebreaker can't connect. Olsen in transition, into the paint, tough two, gets it to go. Lucy Olsen's first official bucket in the black and gold. She had a phenomenal exhibition game against Missouri Western 
but her first points in a Hawkeye uniform tonight. I'm sure that's going to be first of many tonight and all season long for Lucy Olsen. Of course, the expectation's high. She's the name everyone's talking about for the black and gold. When you get the number two returning NCAA scorer in all of, all of basketball, you got to feel really good about that if you're Jan Jansen. Talking to her in the press conference earlier this week, wish she had her for all four. It feels like her time's limited with her, but they're going to make the most of it. Especially with, of course, such a heavy senior class moving on last year for the Hawkeyes. Getting someone a high scorer like that is important. This one's ripped away by Ava Hyden. Another big name freshman that Jan Jensen was able to get. McKay pops a three, no good, picks up a rebound. Olsen thought about a three, drives into the paint. Gives it up to Mullaney. All the way around to Fearbach. Fearbach, top of the key. Back iron, no good, rebounded by the Huskies. And the Hawks already have nine three-point field goals, not even four minutes into this game. So they're feeling really good about beyond the arc. You see the confidence from Fuel Rock, McCabe, all around, all these Hawkeyes trying to get points from beyond the arc. Eight for Hawkeyes with just over 540 to go in the first. Lucy Olsen can't connect on the three, goes out of play. It'll be Huskies ball. And there's the freshman, Ava Hyden. We're, talk, we're gonna talk about her a lot during this game. Didn't get the start today, but was on the cusp of starting all five. Her and Addie O'Grady, O'Grady been working it out so far in practice. Who's gonna be the five? But Jan Jansen said not to worry. They're combating styles, both pushing each other in practice. And Hawks, we talked about in the pregame, this freshman class for the Iowa Hawkeyes is one of the most impressive in the recent memory. So many big names coming to Iowa City and landing in Iowa City. And you got three on the floor five minutes into the game one, so that, that tells you the confidence that Jan Jansen has in these freshmen, Stremlaw, Hayden, and 55 Mal Malglini in there as well. And she was phenomenal in that exhi exhibition match, wasn't she, AJ? She was, she really stole the headlines from the freshman class as we get a look at that three from Parkima out of Story City, Iowa, back in her home state. Splashing a three to bring the Huskies back within one. Fear back, dumps it in, puts up a tough shot, gets her own rebound, taken away by the Huskies. Quickly the other way is Doyle. Puts up a tough shot and gets fouled. Yeah, and a lot of sloppy basketball so far for both of these teams. A lot of turnovers, three for Northern Illinois and two for the Hawkeyes. Both teams not keeping it in their hands. We saw Iowa getting a lot of offensive boards on that one possession as well. So no team, I think both these teams need to you know, emphasize, slow it down, try to get some of your offense going. I think both of these teams could benefit from that. Iowa shooting 27% from the field. Northern Illinois, not as many shots, but shooting 42% from the field so far as Doyle connects on her first. Alicia Doyle, the junior from Carterville, Illinois, misses her second. Here's Fearbach. Olsen goes to work, gives it up to Fearbach. Back to Olsen. Surveying the court. Dumps it down low. Northern Illinois keeps it alive. He'll stay on this side as Shannon Blosher couldn't quite keep it in. And you see Iowa right now, it's gonna take some getting used to. You don't have a Caitlin Clark to lead the point. I think that storyline is gonna be there all year long, but I think everyone on this Hawkeye team and everybody in the crowd is excited to see, hey, maybe watching Big Ten women's basketball on Big Ten Plus. her in the season opener. Back to live action here right away into the paint. Buckets no good from Ava Hyden. Quickly the other way. Carlson into the corner. Not about a three and it's a travel. 
Yeah, and back to Sita Falter. We weren't sure if we were going to see her today. Jan Jansen said it would be limited minutes, but Jan Jansen said she has to be careful on herself. She wants to see Sid a Falter on the floor, but knows you know it's not in the best interest for both parties right now to risk further injury. So giving her some further time off before you know you get to Big Ten play if you possibly can. And I think everyone in this crowd would agree they want to see Sid a Falter when she is 100% healthy because they know what she can do when she is 100% healthy. She was sixth player of the year. She was on that all Big Ten tournament team last year. She was a force not to be reckoned with. Well, and I, I don't think Hawkeye fans appreciate enough is, you know, if Molly da when Molly Davis goes down in that game on senior day and you don't have a Sita Folter to step up in the Big Ten tournament and the regional where she was both all tournament team, you're in a totally different spot. She was phenomenal in that Big Ten tournament and in the NCAA tournament. This one's ripped away by the Hawkeyes, but taken right back. Huskies pop a three. McCree for three. The red shirt senior from Cedar Rapids. Another Husky back in her home state. Olsen into the paint. Can't get it to go off the window. Yeah, and you see Northern Illinois out of this timeout. We see a fast break right here, but good offensive possession to move it around, find an opening three. Going to try again right here. Just off the back iron. How about the Huskies? Up 11 to eight on this new look Hawkeye team. Olsen to Fearbach. Mullaney scored 18 in the exhibition game. Gives it up to Olsen. Back to Stremlau. Pulls up from three. Back iron, no good. Rebounded by Barkima. Now it's probably the slowest, most calm, pos poised possession for the Hawkeyes so far. Really good position, but Kyler Fearbach a steal on the other end. Kylie gives it up for Mullaney. Easy two. Tegan Mullaney, her first bucket in the black and gold. And the first of many, we saw how important she was in that exhibition match the last week. She's going to be phenomenal this season. And that stops a 7-0 run by the Huskies. They have come out firing early against the Hawkeyes. Stonebreaker, one-on-one -on -one with Hayden into the paint. Tries to put up a shot. Goes out of play. And the Hawkeyes already with four steals so far in this game. Kylie Fuhrbach getting in there as well, but everybody getting involved. We see right here, Kylie Fuhrbach able to get an assist and a bucket for the Hawkeyes. We've seen four steals already tonight by the Hawkeyes. They've been back picking the Huskies, but it has been Northern Illinois connecting more often than not up 11 to 10 here with two and a half to go. Dumps it into the corner, pulls up from three. No good, rebounded by McCabe. McCabe dumps it down to O'Grady. Tough bucket for two, Maddie O'Grady. Her first bucket in 2024. And good vision there by McCabe, able to find an open O'Grady, get it to where she's comfortable at. Under the hoop, a good lay in there. This one stripped by Hannah Stolke, helped out by Taylor McCabe. That's another steal. Tremlau gets it up to O'Grady off the window and good. Addie O'Grady back to back buckets and the Hawkeyes retake the lead. Yeah, and no, O'Grady there, great positioning to get open. Two straight possessions from her, Hawks on a 6-0 run. Wormenfeld gives it up to Doyle. Doyle back out to Stonebreaker. Another travel called on Stonebreaker. And another turnover. And Stonebreaker is someone who's gonna have to get involved. You see how O'Grady's using her positioning. We saw Stonebreaker early in that game get involved, use her position, use her body to get in there. She's gonna need to start doing some more of that if NAIU wants to stay in this one. And she had a huge game to open up the season and their season opener. Put up the last two shots in that exciting win for NIU. She also had a big block in the final 29 seconds, which led to that win against the Raging Cajuns. Yeah, and that was a big win. You know, that was such a close game. It came down to the wire. It was an exciting one, bright and early to start off the college season for the Huskies. 57 to 55 was that final score against Louisiana. And boy, they've come out firing here tonight as Addie O'Grady heads to the line. Last season was 50% from the charity stripe. 
Definitely a mark that you want to be better. You see how many opportunities she's got inside so far. Teams are going to have to foul. She's, you know, she uses her height. It's going to be, you know, it's it's a tough habit to foul. So she's going to have to find a way to get that that percentage up there. It's going to make Iowa very productive. We saw Hannah Stolke work on that over the years. We've seen her field th free throw percentage shoot through the roof. Here's Stonebreaker, top of the key. This one's tipped away by Olsen. And how about this Hawkeye defense? This one, tough two by Nickel. Off the window. Quickly the other way, Lucy Olsen. Cross court pass for McCabe. Thought about a three, gives it up to Fearbach. Foul on the Hawkeyes. And you saw right there, McCabe just didn't have the quick pop she wanted there on the corner. Another turnover there for Iowa. Hawkeye is not really able to pull away early in the first quarter. They've hit three of their last three field goals, but Northern Illinois just continues to hang in tough, especially on defense. Here's Doyle. Gives it up to McCree. Inside for Stonebreaker. One on one with O'Grady gets fouled. Stonebreaker will head to the line. Yeah, and this is where another place for NIU. How do they do at the free throw line? Down two in this one. Stonebreaker using her body right here. That's where those that foul trouble is going to come in there. Which of these five positions can hold their ground, stay true to their body, and you know play tough in that five position? Stonebreaker and All-Mac, third team last year. Had her first double-double last season as well. Can't connect on the second. Lucy Olson's played this entire first quarter, so I'm interested to see how that works around all season long. Who's going to be that backup point guard? Who can give Lucy Olson a break when she needs it? I'm excited to see if Taylor McCabe can kind of pick that up a little bit. Saw her bring up the court just a couple of times, but that's where those freshmen are going to be huge impacts. Hawkeyes looking to take the final shot. Olson looking around, finds Mulaney, pops a long three. Can't get it to go as the horn sounds. And that is the end of the first quarter. Hawkeyes escape up by one. But the Huskies, a massive first quarter, but a scary sight here as Hannah Stolke is slow to get up. Yeah, and this is not what you want to see. You're hoping she's able to get up quickly and able to hopefully walk it off soon, hopefully to see her back mm. in this one. There wasn't a lot of contact when she went. 15, 14 Hawkeyes after a one quarter. Northern Illinois hanging in tough. And in large thanks to everybody, McCree, Doyle, Nichols, Stonebreaker, Barkima, have all been getting in on the scoring action. Stonebreaker's one for five from the field, but everyone's really been getting involved. Hoxie, it's not just one player, it's been everybody. Yeah, it's been everybody, and everybody for both teams, but like you said, Northern Illinois, a very balanced approach. Stonebreaker, I think, is going to have to find a way to make more you know, of a madness here. We see her on the wing right now, so I think a lot of a lot of this is gonna have to revolve around here late in the first and in the second half. And especially without their star in Shelby Coker. We did not get word of why exactly she we haven't seen her on the court yet. So that might be something we can look into at halftime. As she was phenomenal in their exhibition game and in their game against Louisiana just earlier this week. But not out here tonight against the Hawks. Yeah, just a near triple-double for her in her first game back after injury. So NIU fans were really excited to see her back. This Hawkeyes turned that one over. Okay, can't quite connect with Hayden. But you're right. I mean, Shelby Coker is one of the bigger names in the MAC, And she had a coming off that phenomenal season two years ago. I think a lot of Husky fans were really excited to see her possibly play tonight against one of the premier teams in the Big Ten. Yeah, for sure, and this is definitely a matchup on your schedule if you're Northern Illinois. You want to make a name for yourself. This is one of your opportunities to do so, and when you're missing your best player, it just it hurts. Doyle gets fouled on the two-point attempt. She'll head to the line. But you got to give credit to the Huskies. Despite Coker not being in the lineup, they have been playing tough, only trailing by one here with the Hawkeyes. Yeah, they're playing tough, really good defense, and both these teams have played a little bit sloppy in that first quarter. We saw a lot of turnovers, but... Iowa able to get a lot of offensive boards as well. And NIU, not, just not, they played good defense when Iowa was trying to capitalize on those opportunities. If Iowa maybe, you know, we saw a couple of those some missed shots. We saw a lot of three-pointers from there. So if you're NIU, you're really happy to be in the position you are right now. Nine turnovers for Northern Illinois, six for the Hawkeyes. 
Neither team has really been able to capitalize off those turnovers, however. Here comes Tremlo quickly the other way. Lucy Olsen pops a three, rims out. A lot of three-point attempts tonight. That's the 10th for the Hawkeyes. They've only connected on two. And Olsen is going to get a lot of opportunities from beyond the arc. 0 for 3 to start. Not her most comfortable position, but the Hawkeyes not afraid to take a couple shots from beyond the arc. Quickly the other way. Tremlo off the window and good. Tremlo, her first bucket in the black and gold. And good work there from Hawkeyes to rotate inside the paint, find the open man. We saw Hawkeyes pass up on a three there from Fuhrbach. Stremlo doing a really good job there to find the open Hawk. The number 88 overall prospect in that freshman class. Signed by head coach Jan Jensen. She gets a steal here. Stremlo the other way. Gets pickpocketed, but a foul. And Stremlo, she's going to have a lot of opportunities at the point guard position so far. Of course, Sydney Fulter, another guard who's injured right now. But, you know, with Stremlo in here, she's getting a lot of valuable minutes right there. We saw finding the other freshman able to get her open and then get the bucket. Olsen to inbound. Hanging on to a one point lead here in the second quarter. Shremlo around to Olsen. Dumps it inside for Hyden. Keeps it alive. Fearbach thought about a three. Gives it up to Shremlo into the corner for Olsen. Pops the three. Bingo! And Lucy Olsen gets her first three-pointer as a Hawkeyes. You saw it move all around the wing right there. That's when I was able to make most of their shots. Pass the ball around. Don't be selfish. We've seen this Hawkeye team show no selfishness so far. They like to move fast under head coach Lisa Bluter. That doesn't seem to be changing under Jan Jensen. Fierbach gets the miss. The other way for Olsen. Gives it up to Hyden off the window and good. She's a point guard too, she can score and she can find the open man as well. Ava Heinen able to flood the paint there and get open, great pass there from the transfer Olsen. And her first bucket in the black and gold for Ava Heinen. A lot of firsts tonight for Iowa. Doyle, one on one with Fearbach, gets it around a stone breaker. Ripped away by Stremlo and kept alive. What a play by the freshman. Quickly the other way to Fierbach for three. You bet. Great possession there from Iowa. Started with the freshman Stremlo across the court. Kylie Fierbach knocks it down. 7 0 run, 10 0 run for the Hawkeyes. 25 16, Kylie Fierbach. Her second three of the night. And the Hawkeyes are rolling here as the Huskies take their first time out. You're watching Big Ten Women's Basketball on Big Ten Plus. Twenty-five, sixteen, Iowa out of the Northern Illinois timeout as we get a good look at the new head coach for the Iowa Hawkeyes and Jan Jensen. She's been around for a while here at Iowa City, but finally her first chance at a head coaching job. Yeah, her first chance, and I think you know all around college basketball, Jan Jensen can have an opportunity at a lot of different places. So if you're Iowa, you're really happy you get to retain her. Lisa Bluter, you're sad to see her go, but to keep Jan Jansen in the building, that's how you kept all your recruits to know that a lot of things are gonna stay sam similar. She wants to do things her own way, and she will, we've heard that. She's excited to do so, but you know the foundation of the Iowa program is gonna stay the same. And she talked about when she first got the job, that yeah, she did think about leaving earlier on, but once she decided to stay after the first few offers, there was no way she was leaving Iowa City. Fierbach misses the three. Ball on the ground, NIU comes up with it. And, and you know, back to that point about Jan Jansen, as quick foul there from Iowa. But go back to that point about Jan Jansen. You know, this is home for her. This is where she wants to be. She's been in Iowa. She started at Drake, played at Drake, coached at Drake, followed Lisa Bluter here. This is home for her. She doesn't want to leave home. 
foul called on Stremlo, but didn't look like there's a whole lot of contact after Doyle went down. Here's Dawkins, first minutes tonight. Ripped away, Ava Hyden. Lucy Olson. Fierbach to Stremlo, back to Olson. That's gonna be a foul on Dawkins. There was a lot of contact there, Dawkins and Hyden. You saw Hyden looking for the foul early. Had a little bit of contact with the hold on the arm. Finally got the whistle as she checks out now. A.J. Ettinger checks in for the first time tonight. Played in 24 games last year for the Hawkeyes. And Nasha career best eight points in the Big Ten tournament against Northwestern. Lucy Olson for Mullaney. Fade away to connects. Twenty-seven sixteen now for the Hawkeyes as they extend their run to twelve zero over the last three minutes. This one's tipped away by Olson. Good defense there from Olson to force mm -hmm. NIU to have to put up a shifty pass. Low on the shot clock, puts up a long three, can't connect. Kylie Fierbach comes down with the rebound. Cross court pass for Olson. Olsen puts her to work and connects. Wow, that was, that was at its finest. You saw able to handle the ball there behind the back dribble and fade away. A great shot there from Olsen. She is a shot creator for sure. 14-0 run for the Hawkeyes over the last three minutes and 45 seconds. NIU had kept it tight early, but the Hawkeyes coming alive here in the second quarter. Markima for three, connects. NIU needed that to get some momentum and slow down this Hawkeye run, the 14-0 run that they were on, able to silence there. AJ Ettinger finds an elbow. That's gonna be another foul. And the refs are gonna take a look at this one, look at a potential flagrant. This call is going to be. AJ Ettinger looks like she's gonna be okay. And, and another thing we haven't talked about in this half is Hannah Stolke. We haven't seen her back <clears throat> on the bench yet for the Hawkeyes, so it's definitely one <clears throat> to keep looking out for the rest of this game. So it looks like Taylor McCabe will be going to the line to take the free throws. And what, what we got here is we got a, an intentional foul on Northern Illinois. Taylor McCabe will shoot these free throws here and Iowa will take possession back. So after all the commotion and the conversations, Taylor McCabe connects on both. Yeah, just a, called an intentional foul there. We get another look at it right here. Two players going for it, but Iowa comes out on the better end of it. They'll take possession back. So the run extends to 16 to three over the last four and a half minutes as Iowa, again, has just come alive here in this second quarter. Jada Gimphy in there now for Iowa. Another name that, you know, is a Hawkeye fan favorite. She's always loud, she's always on the sideline, always getting going. It's finally her chance on the court. Was labeled the funniest player on the Hawkeye women's basketball team by her teammates with conversations with them. Always bringing the life and the smiles to the bench as Nickel puts up a tough two. It's kind of like me at, at Big Ten Plus, the funny guy. What do you, all right, Hawks, you give yourself too much credit. <laughs> McCabe around to Olsen. Ettinger in the paint back out to Jimphy. Jimphy thought about it. Olsen double team. Kylie Fierbach for three. Love that confidence there from Fierbach. Her third three of this game. And she loves getting these extra minutes now. Finally getting to show what she can do. Missed 
Two seasons ago to injury, and last year was an important piece for Iowa, slowly getting more minutes now for Jan Jansen. They had a career high four threes against Minnesota last year. She has three already tonight and is leading the offense with nine points. Thirty-four twenty-one as she inbounds it to Olsen. Just over three minutes to go in the half. Fearbach into the paint, puts up a tough shot but can't connect. Fearbach with a steal and a bucket. She's doing it all tonight. We've seen steals, we've seen three-point baskets. Kylie Fearbach, what a way to start the season. And we've seen so many steals tonight from both sides as that was Iowa's seventh as a team. Stonebreaker gives it up to Doyle and Fearbach another steal. In the paint goes Jimphy, tough two. You love that from Jimphy, the confidence gets it right away, goes to her left, no backing down whatsoever. Tough two there from Jada Gimphy. Points off turnovers for the Hawkeyes. They now lead that stat 14 to six. They have really been capitalizing on these turnovers. Long two for McCree, she connects. Her second three-pointer of the night. McCabe to answer. Boom. Taylor McCabe, this is what she wants, finding open threes. That's how Iowa's gonna be able, you know, in those close games when you need a three-pointer, she's gonna be someone they look at. Look for her on the wings all season long in Big Ten play. She was a three-point machine in the Big Ten tournament last year. They're looking for her to do that again this season as a full-time starter. Doyle gets fouled. She'll head to the line for two. And, and Taylor McCabe, she's, it was tough for her her first two seasons, especially her freshman year, to get in there because she was very situational. You needed her when you needed a three, but she wasn't able to work through those growing pains that you need to in that first year of college basketball. So now's her time. Now's her time to really get those minutes. Keegan Mullaney checks in for the Hawkeyes after the foul on Doyle sends her to the line. Fearbach was called for the foul. And that's her second of the night. Doyle hits them both. Lexi Carlson checks in for the Huskies. Much better second quarter here for Iowa. They're playing a lot slower. They're making their threes. You know, we saw in that first quarter, they shot a lot of threes, but there were a lot of misses there. So. A lot of right of, the, right of the basket. Now here they're slowing it down, playing, playing their own basketball. But we've seen all game long the hustle, the steals, the great defensive effort, another good effort there. Mullaney through the traffic. Puts it off the window for two more. Iowa has hit on four of their last four field goals. NIU keeps it alive. Three for Barkema, connects. That's her third tonight. And the Iowa native making it known back in her home state. Good possession there from NIU, good passing around. Lucy Olsen, nasty too. But she bounces it back. Iowa has always found the answer here in the second quarter. She's now up to nine points tonight. Here's a corner three as Carlson answers. NIU has really been taking advantage of those open threes. That's their sixth tonight. As Lucy Olson will try to take this clock down as far as she can. NIU will have one more possession after this shot. Olson gets the screen, gives it back to Mullaney. Top of the key, no good. That's not the shot you want if you're Iowa. You saw just a little bit Rush there, a little, looking for a little bit more openness, but we saw the contact there from Mulaney and the defender. Iowa gonna have to have a good defensive stop and try to roll some momentum going into half. And Tiga can absolutely hit the three. She hit four of them in their exhibition game, just a little short there. NIU looking to have the final possession into the paint. Dumps it back out, but uh, she will go out of bounds with three seconds left.
That'll be on Ava Hyden, the foul. So we'll send Blumenfeld to the line. With 3.2, hits the first. Yeah, very balanced here from NIU. We've seen a lot. Arkema have been very good for NIU to keep them in this one, but you know, just a couple off your hands. You wish this one just a little bit closer, some mispossession, but Iowa's always had the answer so far. Quick timeout here. They want to roll another a good possession out here. We'll keep it right here as Blumenfeld connects on both free throws, 45 to 34 now. Iowa and NIU have connected on five of their last six field goals. We got to give credit to the Hawkeyes. A tight first quarter, and like you said, a lot of misses, especially from beyond the arc, but here in the second, they have been on fire. Yeah, and we saw right away, NIU 10-0 drought to Iowa to start this quarter off. Now five of their last six, but the Hawkeyes have combated that. It's all around effort. Lucy Olsen playing a great point guard, and the effort from these freshmen has been phenomenal so far. It'll be Jada Jimfee to inbound it. Tegan Mullaney, the lone freshman, still out onto the court after the quick timeout from Iowa. 3.2 on the clock. Looking for one last shot. Ediker gives it up to Olsen. One second left, puts up a shot, no good. Good look for Lucy Olsen, but Iowa up 45 to 34 at the half. And what a scoring effort here by the Hawkeyes. Lucy Olsen with nine points, Kylie Fierbach having a phenomenal night in the season opener. NIU has hung tough though. Some tough buckets from Stonebreaker and Doyle. 45-34, when we come back, we'll have the second half. You're watching Big Ten Women's Basketball on Big Ten Plus. 3 point line and she has hit three of them. She's played 12 minutes tonight as well. So overall the Huskies playing solid here against the Hawkeyes. And like we said, that first quarter was back and forth. But in the second, Iowa really started to pull away as we saw more, better ball movement and taking those better shots. Yeah, those better shots for sure. And a huge sigh of relief for the Hawkeyes. Hannah Stolke back on the floor for the black and gold. So didn't see her in that second quarter at all, but a huge sigh of relief for Hawkeye fans. Yeah, we saw her going down with what looked like a non-contact injury. She was down for the rest of the half, but she's back out here for the second half as we take a look at the points off turnovers. Iowa really leading in that statistical category. And large thanks to Kylie Fierbach. Lucy Olsen quickly into the paint for a quick two. Defensive fall apart there for the Huskies. It's not everyone on the same page. Lucy Olsen takes advantage. Here is Doyle. Seven points tonight. Five of them have been, have been from the charity strike. Doyle top of the key, pops a three, misses left. Gets her own rebound and gets it to go off the glass. Really good effort there for Doyle. Okay. Able to get the opportunity to re-attack for the Huskies. And those are those second chance points that NIU was struggling to find like Sydney talked about at half. Lucy Olsen. Follows it up with a two-pointer of her own. Back-to-back -back buckets for number 33. Doyle left wing one-on-one -on -one with Fierbach. Gives it up to Bloomfeld. Ripped away by Fierbach. Lucy Olsen to Stolke. Into the corner for McKay. Pulls up from three. Can't get it to go. Stolke collects the rebound. O'Grady down there. Out of play, and it's going the other way. And although O'Grady couldn't handle it right there, you see the benefit of having two significant big men on the floor for the Hawkeyes, O'Grady and Stolke, able to, able to get boards and a lot of second chance opportunities for the Hawkeyes. Now, Hannah Stolke was playing the five quite a bit last season because of the depth of this team and almost a little bit of the lack of depth at the five position, but this year with Ava Hyden coming in as a freshman, Hannah's been able to move to that four spot where she's a little more comfortable. A little bit more comfortable, but she's going to get rebounds regardless. She's going to give these Hawkeyes more opportunities. Taylor McCabe can't connect, and he goes out of play. It allows Iowa to play just a little bit bigger now. You know, you don't have Kate Martin, you don't have Gabby Marshall, you don't have Caitlin Clark as well. So missing those guards, those front court, you kind of change it up a little bit. And Jan, Jan, Jan Jensen, a big 
you know, five spot. You know, she was the coach of Megan Gusterson, Monica Sinano, so she loves that opportunity for these Iowa five spots. Considered the whisperer at the five spot here in Iowa City. As Doyle pops it to, can't get it to go. Hannah Stolke with the rebound. Well, the whisperer's got to like the depth she has at that position. Here Bach misses the three, Olsen with the rebound. Olsen, fade away, two, connects. This is not a spot on the floor where she doesn't feel comfortable. Whatever she gets the ball, she somehow has some sort of shot to combat with. No answer from the Husky defense. Into the paint, go the Huskies. Ripped away, McCabe hits the court, fighting for it. And we'll have a jump ball. Possession arrow toward the Husky, so we'll stay on this side of the court as Taylor McCabe checks out for Stremlow. We get another look at it. It was O'Grady who originally poked it away. McCabe went down for it along with Stonebreaker. This one's tipped away by Fearbach. Another steal for Kylie. Olsen all alone. Thought about a three, dumps it down to O'Grady off the window. Addie O'Grady picks up her seventh point. Yeah, and that was Kylie Fuhrbach's sixth steal of the day. A new career high from her. And I think she's loving these minutes. And you know, we talked about how important Sid Afolter is in this lineup for Iowa. But Kylie Fuhrbach's doing a lot of things that Sid Afolter does. Getting those steals, playing that hustle ball. But all around the court today, Iowa on the floor, getting a ton of steals, a lot of second chance opportunities. You love to see this in this new look Hawkeye team. And just think about how scary this team could be when Sydney Fulter gets back. We've seen the points primarily from Olsen and Fearbach, but Sydney Fulter is another scorer for the Hawkeyes, but can also play some pretty solid defense alongside Fearbach and O'Grady. Yeah, for sure. And this Hawkeye team, it's going to be depth. Aliyah Guyton. Aliyah Guyton is going to be another name, the 58th overall prospect last year. So a name they're looking to get back. Of course, you want to get her reps in here. But like Jan Jensen said, slowing down, you don't want to you know, put too much stress on an injury like that. Stolke gets fouled and hits the court again. This time she pops up right away. Still looking for her first points of the 2024 season. And she'll get a chance here at the charity strike. And this is a big key area area for Hannah Stolke. We saw her improve just a little bit last year. 46%, 63 last year. So a huge jump there, 70 in that first game. So that's a huge number for the Hawkeyes to keep a look at. Connects on the first. And last year there were a few extra pops when Hannah would hit a free throw just because the fans knew that she had been struggling from that spot on the court the year before. But tonight, she hits both to open up the season and her first two points for 2024. And credit to coaching staff and her to you know, keep emphasizing how important those free throws are. It's just going to make her game better, get some more points on the board for her. Stonebreaker one-on-one with O'Grady wins that battle. She is going to be a problem in the MAC. Was on third team. All-conference third team last season. As O'Grady can't connect on the layup, gets her own rebound and fouled. Maddie <laughs> O'Grady headed back to the line. And that's Stonebreaker's third foul. And what a good second chance effort off the tip, just able to stay strong with it. Don't let any contact get in her way and one opportunity for O'Grady. McCabe checks back in for Fearbach. Mulaney looks like she'll be checking in at the next opportunity for Iowa. And Lucy Olson has not taken a seat yet this game. And you know, you want to see her on the court, but I was going to have to find a way to give her some breathers, especially you know, when you play those fast paced teams, you need that depth. We're seeing a lot of that depth right now, but Jan Jensen right now just doesn't have 
total faith in someone right now to lead that full point guard when she's not on the court. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, throughout the season if they're able to kind of rest her up, someone they can really rely on to run that second team offense. Deacon Mullaney checks in as anticipated. Out of the foul. Taylor McCabe, top of the key, connects. Taylor McCabe have a night, her third three-pointer. She's not someone you want to leave open in any sort of capacity. Doesn't need a whole lot of space to drain a three. Neither is McCree, her third three-pointer. Hannah Stokey trying to get behind the defense, but just too much on that pass. And we've seen that one before. And Stolke's someone who can catch up to that a lot, so look for that a lot. You know, playing that four position, she has a ton of athleticism we've seen early in her Hawkeye career. We saw her the last couple of years make those types of plays, except it was Caitlin Clark delivering the passes. Into the corner, blocked by, well, excuse me, by Stremlo. She came flying into the corner. That's going to be a whistle against NIU. What a play by Stremlow. And that's what we've seen all night long, the hustle, the defensive effort she brings. That's why she's earning those minutes so far in this one. Hawkeyes have hit four of their last five field goals. Olsen into the paint, double team, looking around, finds Mullaney, top of the key. Rims out. Stolke kicks it back out to Mullaney, driving into the paint, puts up a shot, can't get it to go, but is fouled. Good confidence there from Mullaney to drive there. Didn't like the first shot she took, able to find a different opportunity there. But that started with Olsen right there. You see her drive inside, that collapses that defense and finds an open three. And the Hawkeyes have a lot of people on the perimeter that can knock down a three-pointer. Antiqua Mullaney, despite being at the five spot here, in this rotation right now on the court. She has proven that she can hit the three. In that exhibition game against Missouri Western, she went four for nine from beyond the arc. Not afraid to shoot it whatsoever. And you love to see that confidence in a freshman. Sometimes in those first couple minutes, you're trying to find you know, a senior leader to get the open shot. But when you have that confidence early, Jan Jensen loves that. The versatility from everyone on this team is something to keep an eye on. Pops it too, delivers as Blumenfeld picks up her fourth point and her first field goal of the night. 61-45 with five minutes to go in the third quarter. Taylor McCabe. Olsen into the paint, pops it too, can't get it. Into the corner for Doyle. Bounce pass inside. Whistle. Stokey not happy about that one. Frustrated with herself there, but take us to the timeout now. 61-45 as NIU calls a timeout. When we come back, we'll as a head coach here for the Huskies, but she has reached academics off the court. Nine academic All-Mac selections in her tenure. And you love when a coach can do that, manage the balance between classroom and on the court. She's been able to do so and made, a, made so much of a difference here in the MAC. So Northern Illinois, a team that's always in the running there in the MAC. Hannah Stolke hits her first field goal of 2024. And you're absolutely right, Hoxie, when a head coach like Carlson, and she makes a nice play there. Nice catch by head coach Lisa Carlson. She can ball out too, I guess. <laughs> But when you have a head coach that is also focused on off the court things with her athletes and making sure they are ready for after college because the truth is a lot of collegiate athletes, most collegiate athletes probably won't even get the chance to sniff the big leagues. So having them prepared for after Almost college is a massive time. thing in college athletics. And it's very similar on the Hawkeye said, Jan Jensen, you know, just such a leader and such a role model in your life. She wants you to be successful. Every single person that steps foot in that Hawkeye locker room, I think, has good things to say about Jan Jensen. Lucy Olsen connects. Hawkeyes now lead by 20 with 3.45 to go in the third quarter. Olsen up to 17 points in her Carver Hawkeye debut. Olsen with the steal. Fearbach the other way. 
Gives it up to Olsen, into the paint. Mullaney, tough two. Physical two there, you see the confidence again, not straying away from that. A lot of freshmen sometimes maybe try to find open there, but takes the contact, pushes through, gets the easy bucket. Doyle all the way to Barkema. Back to Doyle, pulls up from three, can't connect. Ripped down by Blacher. Back into the paint, pops a two. There's Blumenfeld. Her second field goal tonight, she's up to six. Olsen cross court pass. Stremlo for three. Off the back iron. This one's nearly stolen by Olsen. Tough collision right in front of us between Carlson and Olsen, but both seem okay. And you see the jump there from Olsen. That's what this Hawkeye team has done all night, eager for those steals. Olsen just a little bit too late there, draw, draws the foul. She gets her first break of the night right here, so it'll be interesting to see what this offense looks like without her. A lot of guards on the floor. be interesting to see who kind of takes control and who can run that number two offense with Olsen of, off the floor. And a lot of freshmen on the floor as well, Hoxie, if that tells you anything about what this lineup might look like when Lucy Olsen is on the bench. Can't connect on the layup, ripped away by Shremlo. Shremlo bounce pass to Fierbach, back to Mullaney, off the window. And what a possession there from the Hawkeyes, no selfishness. A great pass there inside, wow. and able to get the two, that was fun to watch. Great vision from Stremlo and Fierbach, and that is, again, without Lucy Olsen on the court for the first time tonight. And yeah, they work so well together, and you know, having this many freshmen on the court, they get close, there's a lot of camaraderie that happens. We get a good look, Stremlo out of Fierbach. All the way to the finish, Mullaney doing it once again. Four different hot guys in double digits. Here's McCabe, she has 11. All the way around to Mullaney, pops a three, bingo! In there at the four right now, but not afraid to take a shot on the wing. Doesn't need a whole lot of space. You saw it right there, Tegan Mullaney knocks down another three. The freshman up to 14 points tonight. McCree gets it stripped, gets it right back. McCree back to the top of the key. She connects. Stonebreaker, her first three tonight. And she's not afraid to pop one from beyond the arc. We talked about she was gonna have to be an important piece doing so late here in the third. Taylor McCabe gives it up to Mullaney. She's gonna pop another one off the front iron. The other way for Nickel. McCree gets blocked by Stremlow. Behind the defense, Fierbach gives it up to her. Cross court pass for McCabe in the corner. Too strong, rebounded by NIU. Nearly taken away again by the Hawkeyes. Instead they get it back out to Stonebreaker. Too much juice on that shot. And Stremlo's vision is phenomenal. You see her all the way across the court. We saw her poke that one away, all the way across court, gets it and then finds McCabe. She's ready to go at all times. She knows where the ball is. She knows where all four of her teammates are at. That's what's been most impressive about this freshman. Four seconds separate game clock from shot clock. Stremlo dribbling this one all the way down. Five seconds on the shot clock. Stremlo into the paint, double team, gets it stripped away. NIU looking for the final possession. Here's Stonebreaker all alone. Gets the layup to go, and that is how the third quarter ends. But Iowa leads it 72 to 50, 27 point quarter for the Hawkeyes. Yeah, really good quarter there, able to blow it away. We saw the possessions. We saw them try to you know, focus a lot, good defensive plays. The freshmen, the effort they've brought all night long. On the other side for NIU, Alicia Doyle, she's been having a heck of a night. 11 points, seven of them from the charity stripe. But how about Stonebreaker hitting that three pointer to close out? 
the third quarter, including that final bucket to close out the third. And we talked about it. she was gonna have to be a key piece today. We knew we talked about that three-headed monster that NIU has, but Kylie Feuerbach, she's been phenomenal today. You see six steals, seven rebounds, and in double figures as well, all across the board. Kylie's been today. Three for seven from beyond the arc. She is going to be a key part of this Hawkeye team if they want to try to make it back to the NCAA tournament and possibly the Big Ten Tournament Championship game like they have been the last three years. Hannah Stolke back into the game, into the paint, off the window and good. Count it, she says. This one's ripped away, guess by who? Fearbach, but she gets hit hard in the collision with number 23, that's Barkema. She's got a nose for the ball. We've seen it all day long, just that extra instinct she has to go in there and get that steal, we see right there. And Kylie's just been flying all over the court. She's up to four fouls now after that, but she's been just everywhere. The steals, the rebounds, the three-pointers, as there's a tough bucket by Stonebreaker. Olsen leading the charge the other way. Dumps it inside to Stolke. She connects once again. Another one of the returners from the last couple of seasons in those historic two years with Caitlin Clark. Hannah Stolke is a big reason why they've had so much success as another foul and two more bodies hit the floor. Yeah, and Hannah Stolke is a name that, you know, ever since she was around Iowa City, people have known. Cedar Rapids native in her freshman year. She made an impact right away. Everyone loved the hustle, the rebound she got last year. Getting that starting nod and just Hawkeye fans have been so supporter, supportive of, of, of her over the past couple seasons. Was named to the second team, all Big Ten. And last year in this arena, had a 47 point performance against Penn State, the second most points scored at Carver Hawkeye Arena. At the time, it was the most, but very shortly after that, Caitlin Clark came in and broke that record. I was going through my notes and it brought me back. We <laughs> talked about that game that Hannah Stolke had, all the free throws she had, but Caitlin Clark had to make her name once again known here at Carver Hawkeye. Lucy Olson can't connect on the three. I mean, we could talk all day about Caitlin Clark and the impact she's had. They're gonna retire her jersey at some point this season. They've already hung two banners from their final four runs. They hung another one tonight from last year's as here's a travel on Barkema. But I mean, we could talk all day about the impact Caitlin Clark has had on Iowa, the game of women's basketball, of course, got the Indiana Fever back to the playoffs this season. But the, the Iowa fans already have have turned the page into this season. They know that without Lisa Bluter and Caitlin Clark, the team's gonna look different. But once again, they've sold out the entire season and a phenomenal crowd today in the season opening. It's a new chapter for Iowa women's basketball and I think everyone's excited about it, both of us included. But the thing that's gonna look different is Jan Jensen. Everyone knows her, go Iowa, her Twitter handle. Everyone loves the things that she brings here. She's able to keep the recruits you see the crowd that they br that everyone brought back. This wasn't just a Caitlin Clark thing. This was an Iowa thing, and I love to see it stay, and it should be a good season for the Hawkeyes. Doyle connects from three. She's up to 14 points on the night. That's her first field goal from beyond the arc. As here's Addie O'Grady. She can't connect with Hannah Stolke. But you're right. That was one of the biggest debates around Iowa women's basketball is can they, will the fans continue to come out and show up for a team without Caitlin Clark? And they proved the doubters wrong. They sold out the season once again. Yeah, they did. And, you know, we talk about, you know, everyone was talking Caitlin Clark, you know, is this Iowa team? Iowa comes unranked into this season. A lot of what ifs on this Iowa basketball team, but, you know, they're showing tonight. They still got some firepower. They're going to take a look at this play. Hannah Stolke. Pass it down to Addie O'Grady. But I think they made the right call and it was off of Addie O'Grady. Couple of quick changes for the Hawkeyes. Fierbach and Stremlow check back in. Seven and a half to go in the ball game.
Doyle gets the screen. Quickly double teamed. Barkema on the Hawkeye logo. Gives it up to McCree. Corner three, connects. And what a tough three there. Fading away from that. Wasn't sure she's going to be able to get it off. A great shot there to put another three on the board for the Huskies. She's hit four three-pointers tonight and sir passes her performance from last game where she had seven points and three rebounds. She struggled from that game going one for seven from three as Fearbach answers with a three of her own. Kylie Fearbach, her fourth three-pointer of the night. And she's been on fire trying to earn all these minutes possible. Hawkeye fans love to see a healthy Kylie Fearbach because this is what she brings to the table. Here's Nickel. Puts up a tough two over Fearbach. Time out on the floor as the Hawkeyes lead 81 to 63 with six and a half to go in the ball game. We'll step aside. And she's, you know, what's kept them in this game. A lot of hustle plays there. We talk about those three steals. She's been in on all the action so far, so not giving up. You'd love to see the hustle there from the Huskies. Fearbach inbounds it to Olsen as we get back to live action here at Carver Hawkeye Arena. AJ Reister alongside Hayden Hawksmeyer for the Hawkeye season opener. NIU came into the game after their 57-55 win over Louisiana earlier this week. An exciting one at that to open up their season. They'll head back home after tonight and battle the St. Thomas Tommies for their home for their third game of the season. Yeah, and Iowa on Sunday, a big game versus Virginia Tech. Of course, a year ago, another good game versus them. So Iowa's a really test, a really good test to start off the season. Here's a three-pointer for the Huskies. Connects. This game feels a lot more out of play right now. This is the Huskies' 11 three-pointer. They are knocking them down so far, keeping up pace with the Hawkeyes. That one from Blotcher. Here's Stremlo. Over to Stolke, not about a three, but we'll give it up to Olsen. NIU not going away quietly despite the lead by the Hawkeyes. O'Grady goes up and is fouled. Three point play possibility here for Addie O'Grady who already has nine points tonight. Yeah, and she's been so good inside the paint there, able to go through with the contact and another and one opportunity for her. After the bucket up to 11. Looking for three the old-fashioned way. <laughs> Ava Hyden checks back in for Addison O'Grady. It's been interesting, you know, that, that five battle position we talked about, the Hawkeyes. Ava Hyden, there was a lot of hype around her, maybe becoming the starter at the season, but Jan Jensen, she's talked about it so far, and they're battling out. They keep them both competent, and they, but they want them to play free. They're different styles, but they don't want them to put too much focus on who's starting the game. They said, you know, however the gameplay is going, you could be playing more than the starter, so just look at it as to not be discouraged if you're not the starter. You're going to get a lot of minutes regardless. And last year that was a conversation with, Head coach Lisa Bluter was that five position. It was Hannah Stolke for most of the year. Then it was a battle with Addie O'Grady getting in there a lot as well. And that was a big concern in the offseason was who will Iowa go out and get to try and fill that five spot with Hannah being more comfortable at the four. They got Ava Hyden as she pulls up from two, can't connect. And like you said, now they have a little bit of depth at that position with Hyden and O'Grady. And I think Jan Jensen wants to play positionless basketball as best as you can. If you don't have to look at who's playing one through five, you've got your best players on the floor. They play well with each other, and a lot of players can play a lot of different positions. We see Taylor Stremlo, she's going to have to play a little bit. And then Tegan, Tegan is going to have to play a lot too. We saw her even playing the four when they took Olsen out. So they can play small. Four sixty-eight Hawkeyes out of the media timeout. NIU has played tough here tonight. And Sydney McCree has been having a phenomenal night. 12 points, four for six from beyond the arc. Two rebounds and four assists as well for her. 
Gets the ball here, dumps it back out into the corner, pulls up from three, no good off the iron. Kyler Fierbach, another almost steal there, trying to get in in all the action she can. But yeah, like you said, Huskies, they've kept it close. This team, they're able to shoot the ball like they did tonight. They're going to be a real contender here in the MAC. Sydney McCree, another one of those Iowa natives from Cedar Rapids. Led the team in three-pointers and three-point percentage a year ago as Ava Hyden goes up for the layup. Gets the screen from Barkham of Blotcher. Gives it up to Stonebreaker. Around to McCree. McCree step back three off the mark. Will stay on this side off of Ava Hyden. Yeah, not able to get clean possession of that one. A little bit too strong. She'll check out now. Looking ahead on the Big Ten Plus schedule. Iowa men's basketball team will be back in action tomorrow for their second Game of the season against Southern. Hoxie will be on the call <laughs> tomorrow with Jeff Settles. Very excited. Should be a fun one, always a good one to hang out with Jess and call a game with him. Right back here in Carver Hawkeye tomorrow. Barkema running out of time. McCree passes it again, gives up to Blotcher, connects. Shannon Blotcher. With a second left on the shot clock, able to put up a bucket. Brings it back within 16. Yeah, in this game, it feels a lot more close. And I don't know, NIU, it seems like this game was open, but they've been able to keep it close with threes. Hawkeyes haven't really been able to explore different options, getting that depth in there, having to keep starters in. And NIU, what a fight today without their best player. Hannah Stolke called for the charge. And you're right. Got to give credit to NIU. No Shelby Coker, and that's who we highlighted in the pregame, but not in the lineup tonight. She almost had that triple-double earlier this week against Louisiana in that 57-55 win, but we saw that she wasn't in the starting lineup. Hopefully she's doing okay. We are able to outshoot the Hawkeyes for me on the arc. Of course, Caitlin Clark Donald. Gone, NIU shooting 11 to 24 from three. Iowa just nine of 28. So if you're able to do that all, all year long, you're gonna do pretty well in the action. Logo three off the back iron. Fierbach comes away with it. Bubba Solberger into the game for NIU, her first minutes tonight. Hannah Stokey gets hit hard, but connects on the layup. She took a blow to the face there. She's a little shaken up. I'm not even sure she realized she made it right there. She, she got, she took one right there, Boom. able to go through the contact. Took an elbow to the face from Dawkins. She already has a technical tonight. And Callie Levine will check in for the first time tonight and get her first minutes in the black and gold. It's another big freshman recruit we talked about, one we haven't gotten to talk about a whole lot, but here in the state of Iowa was the top recruit, Miss Basketball, from just down the street, Solon, Iowa. So a lot of Solon natives checking in on this one right now as Hannah Stolke will check out a phenomenal effort from her today. The cable step back in. And Hannah's got roughed up a little bit tonight. Of course, in the first half went down, and we didn't see her her very much and a couple of elbows here in the second half as well but she finishes most likely her night with 11 points six rebounds and a couple of assists as well Solberger in the corner pass too high for Dawkins and we've learned a lot about this Hawkeye team tonight the freshmen they're gonna be so important on how far this team goes excited to watch them grow as this season grows Jada Jimphy back into the game for the Hawkeyes, directing traffic. Gives it up to Levine. Travel called on number 32. Jan Jensen right now telling her to slow down, a little excited to get her first official points in a Hawkeye uniform. Nearly 2,000 career points in high school, and like you said, was 2024 Miss Iowa basketball. 
for the 2024 USA Today Iowa Basketball Player of the Year. Flosher gives it up to Solberger. Faye over to Carlson. This one's tipped by Levine and she keeps it. Love to see that from the freshman in her first official Hawkeye minutes. Great effort play there. McCabe to the corner for three. No good. Quickly the other way goes NIU. Launcher into the paint, dumps it out for Carlson. Connects on three. I'd be really happy if you're this Huskies team of how you've battled tonight. Haven't given up, you've seen a lot of depth and that's gonna be good. When you get your best player back and Shelby Coker, you're gonna feel really good with how this team performed against a really tough Iowa team. Another foul called. 12 for 26, the Huskies from three, 46.2%. They have been phenomenal from beyond the arc tonight. Out shooting the Hawkeyes in that category. Here's Edeker in the paint, spins around off the window and good. AJ Edeker gets her first bucket. Yeah, good move there, you see her Go to her right, able to switch to her left, go up and under and get her bucket of the game. Dumped all the way back out for Carlson. One on one with Stremlo. Into the paint, nearly kicked away. Stremlo dives for it, gives it up to Jim P. 20 seconds left on the clock. Shot clock is turned off. And Stremlo will dribble this thing out. And what a win here for the Hawkeyes. A really well-balanced win. Jan Jensen's first win as a Hawkeye. 91-73 the final. And the Iowa women's basketball team kicks off the 2024 season with a victory. Jan Jensen, like you said, her first win as the head coach has been here with Lisa Bluter for so long, and in her first game by herself, without Lisa, she gets the win. She gets the win, and she does it in great fashion. We saw a little Thank <laughs> you. 